This is the last set of uh, lecture notes for CSIS 248 Operating Systems Programming and this will be this set of lectures will be on threads. So we've seen how processes work and threads are sort of similar to processes but of course different. Okay, so we'll go through an overview, take a look at what multi-threading is and then look very briefly at p-threads um, which is a very um, useful alternative to what the main thing that we are going to do which is uh, Linux threads that is native Linux threads uh, native threads uh, for the Linux operating system okay so what exactly is a thread a thread is an abstract data type representing an independent flow of control within a process so the idea is that a process run is an uh, sort of the operating system's view of a running program and within that running program you can have independent um, sort of you can think of these as independent machines running within a single process and so you can think of these as separate programs but they all share something with um, the main process typically that's how it's used so if you look at just about any application on Windows pretty much all of them are multi-threaded these days you just have to make your applications responsive by making them multi-threaded so an application may be a single executable so even if it's a single executable it can be multi-threaded it runs as a single process but may open multiple windows each running on one or more threads even if you don't open multiple windows it's there's a good chance you have multiple threads just about any GUI program that is any graphical user interface program it's just about necessary to be uh, to make these programs multi-threaded so that can they can respond to users and at the same time do some processing okay so let's take a look at the differences between single threaded and multi threaded processes so far all of our programs that we've been setting up have been single threaded just about all of them from now on we'll start looking for the rest of this week we'll start looking at uh, how you can have a process but then have uh, in addition to the stack that we use for the our main process we will also set up threads that run independently so basically they'll be they'll be parts of the program that uh, that are going to be working at the same time so fork is not an example of multi-threaded code because what fork does is when you have a single threaded program somewhere in here let's say at this point you had a fork what you do is you create a brand new process that's also single threaded and that runs separately that's a completely separate process so it's not um, it's not exactly like this. So this is a little bit different from, uh, quite a bit different actually from fork, although there are some similarities because when you fork you actually do get a copy of the code, the data, uh, any files that were open, all of the registers and stack and all of that, that's kept copied over to the uh, to the new process, but they're not copied back. Okay. Alright, so then you might say, well, why use threads since we already have fork? Well, for one thing, threads are sort of lighter than processes. That are, they're easier and cheaper to create, and it's actually cheaper to switch between threads. You can share data with the parents. That's the important thing. And, make, and it's usually used to make programs more responsive. Some of the disadvantages are, well, sharing data makes bugs more likely if, but if you have, and that happens if two things are writing to the same location, two threads writing to the same location, and if you cannot control what order that they write to that location, well, then, yeah, you can get some very horrendous bugs. And so that's one of the disadvantages. So once again, we do this to make our programs better, more responsive, faster, things like that. But there is the downside. You can have bugs, you can have um, le less protection of data, you can have runaway threads that clog the system, that is they take up memory, they take up CPU time, and you cannot get all the work done that you want. So there are disadvantages, and these are all things that you want to avoid, and you can fix them you can they're just bugs so normally they should not happen so the benefits definitely outweigh the the, the disadvantages okay what are the benefits your programs are more responsive you can share resources um, 
it's more economical that is it's faster to use threads than to have multiple processes uh, and so it's it's better than having multiple processes uh, run and you can utilize multi-core architectures to speed up your program so these days just about any processor that you buy will be multi-core you know you can basically very rarely can you get a single processor machine um, and those would be special purpose devices almost any CPU that you get will have multiple cores even the CPUs that go into smartphones are now two four and even eight processors so what that means is I you could be running eight different programs at exactly the same time if you only have one program running and you have eight threads uh, to do all the different processing that the program needs then you can you know the uh, promise is that you can speed up your application by maybe a factor of eight so all kinds of companies are interested in doing that okay so let's take a look at what the th state of a thread is so just like we saw processes have a process ID a thread will have a thread ID and it turns out that in Linux at least the thread ID is basically just a process ID it's the same thing okay what else do you store in the state of a thread the machine state so this is CPU registers the program counter the stack pointer all the things that um, tell you what the state of the CPU was for that thread at that point in execution Now, a lot of these things will make more sense actually next year once you once you get to assembly language programming all of these um, concepts like machine state will be a little bit clearer for now you just want to know that there is such a thing as a machine state things like the priority of the process remember you can bump up your priority that is decrease the niceness in Linux and thereby take more CPU uh, things like that there's a signal table there's a mask for the signal table that is what signals are you blocking if there is an error state all of those things go into the state of the thread so how do you set up threads how do you use them you have to create them and once you create this thread, it's not automatically always running. Uh, and this is uh, actually pretty obvious in Java, more so than what we will look at, which is a little bit uh, more, a uh, little bit more basic. And what we will look at is Linux threads. In that case, as soon as you create them, they're started. So it's not it's not always the case, but typically. Uh, Typically, when you say threads, you have to create the thread object, then you start them at some point, then they stop, or you can kill them. Kill a thread if it's either should be done, or or if you want to, if it's a runaway thread, you you want to be able to stop that thread. Almost always, we will use this term join to mean wait for a thread to terminate. So this is the. Uh, this is the word that's used in C++, the new version of C++. This is the version. This is the word that's used in Java, um, and so these things are common. What we what what join means is just finish for or wait for a thread to finish and then uh, pick up the parent execution after the thread, the child thread is done. Okay, so there's also lock and synchronization. So that is for to make sure that when you have multiple threads, they, if they're both trying to write to the same thing, you want to lock that object so that only one thread is able to write at a time. Otherwise, all kinds of things will go wrong. And we look at some of the problems, but we, uh, we'll actually not do a whole lot with this in this course because it's just so complicated. All right, and then we should be able to change priority, things like that. So there's two kinds of threads that is, uh, kernel threads and user threads. User threads is done by a library that runs in user space. For some of the examples are Java threads. If you've used um, um, multi-threading in Java, you've probably used Java threads. If you haven't, no big deal. This is something that we do in later courses. This is somewhat implementation department dependent, but uh, on most machines like Windows, Linux, Mac OS X, Java threads are actually uh, uh, not uh, user threads. They're actually each Java thread and on most machines are actually mapped onto uh, kernel threads. That's the other kind of threads that we have in 
gotten to yet. Also, operating systems like Solaris, those threads can be user threads. Mach is the underlying operating system or the kernel of the Mac OS X operating system. And then POSIX threads, both of these kinds of threads are available on Mac OS X. POSIX threads are available on Linux too, um, and it's used by C++, for example, in the new version of C++, use POSIX threads. So these are all examples of threads that you probably will have used in some application even without knowing it. And the difference here is for this course we're going to write our own threads. We're not going to use user threads. User threads have the um, advantage that they run on top of the operating system. That is, the operating system doesn't really know that they are user threads for, as far as the operating system is concerned, they just, they're just they just part of a process. They run, user threads run within a single process and it's invisible to the kernel. So kernel the kernel does not know about user threads. Scheduling is a big problem and it's done by the library and it's done by the user process. That is, how do you decide which threads get to run? That's all decided by the way the programmer sets it up and the library, the thread library sets that up. Okay, so when you set when you set up user threads, these compete for resources within your single process. So they're computing they sorry, they're competing for CPU time, they're competing for memory, all of that within how much memory and CPU time that the operating system allocates to your process. Kernel threads are what we are going to use. These are supported by the kernel. That is, each one of these threads that we set up will be known by the kernel. So examples of these are in Windows, all of the versions from 95 on, 2000 XP, uh, Vista, uh, and Windows 8. They all have kernel threads. There are lightweight processes in Solaris and a bunch of other versions of Unix like True64 Unix, BOS, and Linux and what we will concentrate on is just one kind of uh, thread, kernel thread which is the one that Linux has, the native Linux threads. The idea is that once you see how Linux works these there are others you can figure out pretty much. Once you've seen it in one place the others are not so hard to figure out. Okay, so these are the features of kernel threads. They have to be supported by the operating system. That is, you have to make an operating system call to create the thread. You have to make an operating system call to stop the thread and so on. Uh, context switch is something we haven't really talked about a whole lot, but this is switching the state of thread. So for example, let's go back to the thread state, machine state, things like this. Now, each thread will have its copy of CPU registers uh, including the program counter and the stack pointer. So this is considered the state of that thread. So when you switch and start to execute some other thread, you have to save the state of the current thread to RAM or disk and then load the state of another thread. That is, load the th CPU register values, the program counter value, stack pointer value. These are all registers you have to load that from another thread and where is that? That's usually in memory, RAM or in uh, disk drive. So that switching from one thread to another is called a context switch. Or you could also be switching between a thread in your uh, process to a thread in the kernel. That's also called context switch. Now this context switch will involve kernel code. So the kernel knows about these threads, and so when you switch from one to... All the statement says is that when you switch from one thread to another, that will involve the kernel, as opposed to use the threads where um, when you switch, it does not really involve the kernel. Okay, so each thread is scheduled. The O operating system is what decides when a thread runs, and it threads compete throughout the operating systems with all the other processes, not just your process. So th these, it's a little bit more equal. And of course, we do all of this because we can take advantage of multiple CPUs. So if you have more than one CPU, chances are your program will be faster if you use kernel threads.